Murder Mysteries of Yoshi's Island. Round 10. Snowy found Doggy dead in the kitchen. Meanwhile, in Yoshi's room, he was relieved that he was not the murderer again. <sighs> I thought I was going to be the murderer again for sure. Thank goodness I'm not. Suddenly, Yoshi heard someone calling for him from outside his room. It was Shelly and she looked frightened. Dad, you're not the murderer again, are you? No, I'm not this time. Trust me, Shelly. Ah, I'm tired after all the movement I did the past three rounds. Okay. Yoshi decided it was best for him to sleep. He laid down on his bed, hoping to get some rest. As Yoshi drifted off to sleep, he had a horrifying nightmare. In a nightmare, he saw the real murderer, Yoshi.exe, who was his evil self. Yoshi realized that he had been Yoshi.exe all along, and that he had been unknowingly committing the murders. Suddenly, Yoshi was teleported to a graveyard at his normal self. There were 11 tombstones in front of him, each with a name engraved on it. No, this can't be. Dougie, Mousy, Eddie, Snowy, Johnny, Nettie, Cloudy, Sunny. Tommy, Shelly, Birdo, they were all dead. Why? Suddenly, Yoshi.exe appeared in front of him, laughing maniacally. <laughs> Why did you kill them? Why? <laughs> because I'm a monster, Yoshi. I am the real you. I'm the one who's been controlling you this whole time. And now that it's over, you can join them in the grave. With a flick of his wrist, Yoshi.exe throws a knife at Yoshi's heart. As he collapses to the ground, the real Yoshi.exe disappears, leaving only the knife embedded in his chest. The ghostly figures of his murdered friends appear around him, their accusatory eyes burning into his soul. Yoshi woke up with a start, drenched in sweat and panting heavily. His heart was racing, as he could feel the knife in his chest, throbbing with pain. He looked around frantically, realizing that it was just a dream. He sighed with relief and tried to calm down. It was just a dream. Just a dream. Yoshi lay there for a few moments, trying to regain his composure before finally mustering the strength to set up. As he did so, he glanced around the room and was relieved to see that everything looked the same as it had before. Except, he noticed that Snowy was in his room. Yoshi hadn't seen him there before, and it made him uneasy. Snowy was concerned about what happened. Are you okay, Yoshi? You were really struggling in your sleep. What happened? It, it was just a nightmare. I was the murderer again. But I was controlled by Yoshi.exe. Suddenly, I was teleported to a graveyard where you all were dead. Yoshi.exe said that he was the real me. He then threw a knife at my heart and I died. Then I realized that it was all just a dream and I was relieved. Anyway, are you the murderer again? No, I'm not this time. Who is that? Doggy. Oh. Anyway, thanks for your help. I'm gonna keep looking. Snowy went to check on Yoshi's brother, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Did you kill Doggy? Huh? No, Snowy. Why would I do that? Just checking. Sorry to bother you. Snowy went to look for Shelly. As he walked down the hall, he saw her coming out of her room, looking a little lost. Hey, Shelly. You okay? I I'm not sure, Snowy. I think I had something from my father's room. Yoshi just had a horrible nightmare. I checked on him to see if he was okay. Thank you, Snowy. I I'm just so worried about him. I know. I am too. I should keep looking for whoever killed Dougie. Where's your mother? She's with Marcy. Alright, thanks for the info. I'll go check on them. Snowy found his way to where Marcy and Birdo were. Hey Marcy, hey Birdo. Did you see anything out of the ordinary? No, Snowy. I was just trying to calm down Birdo, who is very upset about what happened. Is anyone going to remember the entire time that we're just pretending Dougie is not actually dead? Duh, the murderer has a fake knife. I guess we forgot. 
Well, at least I'm not the murderer, Snowy. I've been here the whole time. Yeah, she's been with me the whole time. She didn't even leave the room. Okay, thanks for your help, Buddha and Mousy. I'll keep looking. Snowy went to check on Nettie. He found him sitting in front of his room. Hey, Nettie, did you see anything suspicious? Yeah, actually. I think I know who the killer is. Who do you think it is? It's gotta be Yoshi. He was acting really shifty earlier. It's not him again. Really? Because Yoshi was the first one to find Dougie. He could have easily killed him. Well, Yoshi did say he had a nightmare that he was controlled by Yoshi WXC, making him the murderer. But he also said he was relieved that it was just a dream and that he wasn't the murderer this time. I swear it's not him. I don't know. Something about it just feels off. What makes you think that he's the murderer? He kept saying that he had a nightmare that he was Yoshi XC. That's a bit suspicious if you ask me. How is that suspicious? Well, it just seems like he's trying to cover something up. Maybe he's actually the killer and he's just trying to throw us off. Trust me, Nettie. Yoshi isn't the murderer this time. I can see it in his eyes. He's genuinely relieved that it was just a dream. You're just looking for things that aren't there. Fine. If you say so. But I'm not going to forget about this. I'm still going to keep my eye on him. Snowy went to check on Eddie and Claudie. Hey, you two. Do you know who the murderer is? Nettie thinks it's Yoshi, but I don't think it is. Oh, I think I know who it is. I saw someone sneaking out of the dining room earlier. Really? Who was it? It was Yoshi. I didn't think much of it at the time. But now that everyone's acting so suspicious... Yeah, some too. You guys are sure it was Yoshi? Pretty sure. He was walking to the kitchen. Okay. I'll go talk to Johnny about this. Snowy found Johnny and told him about what Nettie, Eddie, and Claudie thought. Hey, Johnny. I think we might have a problem. Some people think Yoshi might be the killer. They saw him sneaking out the dining room earlier. Hmm. I see. Well, I didn't see him either. But I did see Tommy go to the kitchen. That was right before Dougie was found dead. It's possible that Yoshi and Tommy are working together, but I don't want to accuse them without proof. We'll have to keep investigating. There's only one murderer every round. Oh, well, I think it's probably just Tommy. I'm sure Yoshi is innocent this time. <sighs> okay, thank you. Finally, Snowy went to ask Sunny. Hey, Sunny, do you think you saw anything suspicious today? Nettie, Eddie, and Claudie all think it was Yoshi, but Johnny thinks it's Tommy. Well, I didn't see anyone suspicious, but I did hear something. I heard Yoshi whispering to himself earlier. It sounded like he was trying to convince himself that he wasn't the murderer. That's because he had a nightmare about him being the murderer, but when he woke up, he was relieved that he wasn't. Whatever you say, I still think it's him. Okay, I'll look for him. Thanks, Sonny. Snowy went to find Yoshi and confront him. When he entered Yoshi's room, he found him scared. Yoshi, I need to talk to you about something. Uh, hi, Snowy. Is there something wrong? Everyone is saying you're the killer. They saw you sneaking out of the dining room earlier. Ow. Ow. I... I didn't... I didn't do anything. I was just having a nightmare. That's all. I swear it. As Yoshi was backing away from Snowy, he tripped and fell to the ground head first. Ah! Ow. That hurt. Snowy, I swear I'm innocent. You have to believe me. I... I want to believe you, Yoshi, but everyone else is saying something different. I'm sorry, but I think we need to find out the truth one way or another. When Yoshi was kicked out of the house, there's a push from behind, and Yoshi is knocked forward. He trips and falls down the stairs, landing at the bottom with a loud thud. As he hit the bottom of the stairs, his head snaps back, and he lets out a gurgling scream. He tries to get up, but his body is in too much pain. Blood begins to pool around his head, and he struggles to breathe. What did you do to him? No, wait! I didn't mean for this to happen. I just want to find out the truth. 
No, you idiot. You just killed him. Yoshi was innocent. He was just having a nightmare, and now you've killed him. However, Ian heard Yoshi breathing. Ian, I'm still alive. What? No! You can't be! But how? I... I don't know. Just glad I'm still alive. Suddenly, Mario came to see what happened. Hey, what's going on here? I heard someone scream. Is that everyone all right? Mario saw Yoshi lying on the ground, injured. His eyes widened in shock and concern. Yoshi! Are you hurt? Can you hear me? Mario, I'm still alive. But I'm hurt. Bad. You're a doctor, right? Yes, I am. Is that why you're asking? Well, I need you to help him. Please, Mario. You have to help him. He's your best friend. We need to bring him to his room. Mario nodded, knowing that he couldn't just leave Yoshi there. He carefully picked up his injured friend and started carrying him back to his room. As they walked, Yoshi let out a moan of pain. Ian, please, don't leave me. I'm not leaving you, Yoshi. I'm right here. Mario's just taking you back to your room so he can help you. They reached Yoshi's room and gently laid him down on his bed. Mario immediately started examining his injuries and trying to make him comfortable. Well, Yoshi, you're in pretty bad shape. Most of your body is injured. I see cracked bones, gashes, and bruises everywhere. Mario, I think I'm going to die again. I can feel it. Again? What do you mean again? My friends and I were playing murder mystery in real life. Nobody was actually dead until round seven when I was Controlled by Yoshi.exe. Tommy then stabbed me in the heart so that Yoshi.exe would go away. But it ended up with me dead and in this round. I was pushed down the stairs by Snowy. That's a horrible. I'm so sorry, Yoshi. But I promise you're not going to die. I'm going to do everything in my power to save you. Snowy then came to see Yoshi. He stood by the doorway, his eyes filled with tears. Yoshi, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just want to know the truth. I understand, Snowy. I forgive you. But I didn't kill Dougie. You're right. I, I should have trusted you, Yoshi. I'm sorry. Before the murderer was going to kill another player, Snowy caught Tommy. I see that knife, Tommy. Dang it! You wanted to frame Yoshi, didn't you? Well, yeah. Well, look what you made me do. But don't worry. I'll make sure you don't get punished for this. Snowy took... Y Snowy took Tommy to Yoshi's room. They found Mario trying to save Yoshi's life. Yoshi! Yoshi, are you okay? I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. Tommy, I forgive you. I just want to live. The others, even Dougie, came into Yoshi's room, their faces filled with worry. 
Shelly was in tears as she approached the bed. Daddy? Mario, what happened? Shelly, it's a long story. Your father was afraid by Tommy, who made everyone else accuse him, which made Snowy push him down the stairs. However, Snowy didn't kill your dad. I... I understand. But Daddy, please, just... Wake up. Shelly, you... Yes, so kind. I... I... Love you... So... Much. Tears streamed down Shelly's face as she held onto Yoshi's hand. She leaned over and kissed his forehead. I love you too, Daddy. Mario was still trying to save Yoshi but his injuries were too severe. He glanced at Shelly and noticed how upset she was. Okay, Yoshi. I'm going to try something risky here. I'm going to need everyone to clear the room and give us some space. Ian, you can stay. But everyone else, please go out in the hall. The others, including Dougie, reluctantly filed out of the room. Mario turned to Ian, his face etched with determination. Is he going to be okay? I don't know, Ian. I really don't. But I'm going to do everything in my power to save him. You know I wouldn't risk it if I didn't think it was worth it. Right. I trust you, Mario. Just do whatever you can. Mario nodded grimly as he continued working on Yoshi. After several tense moments, he finally managed to stabilize his heartbeat. Mario looked up at Ian, his face showing a mixture of relief and exhaustion. Okay, I think I can move on to the next step. I need you to go out and get some blankets and pillows from the supply closet down the hall. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. I'll be right back. Ian hurried out of the room to retrieve the supplies. The others waited nervously in the hallway glancing back and forth between each other. Shelly was still crying quietly, her face buried in her hands. Dougie tried to comfort her. It's gonna be okay, Shelly. We just gotta have faith. I just want my father to be okay. Here you go, Mario. Thanks, Ian. Now let us see what we can do. Yoshi, can you hear me? Yeah. Good, good. You've been through a lot, but you're going to be okay. Just hang in there. Mario stepped out of Yoshi's room and closed the door behind him. The others in the hallway immediately turned to him, hopeful expressions on their faces. Dougie, Shelly, and the others crowded around Mario as he told him the good news. He's all alive. But he's going to need a lot of rest and time to heal. But I think he's going to pull through. Relief washed over everyone as they heard this news. Shelly threw her arms around Maya, tears streaming down her face. Thank you, Maya. Thank you so much. I don't know what we'd do without you. Maya smiled down at her, patting her on the back gently. It's okay, Shelly. I'm just glad I could help. Now, why don't you all go back to your rooms and get some rest? We're going to visit Yoshi in the morning. The others nodded, filed out of the hallway, and headed back to their rooms. Ian lingered for a moment before following them, shooting a grateful smile at Mario. As he walked past Yoshi's door, he could hear the steady beeping of the monitors inside. You take care of yourself, Yoshi. We'll see you in the morning. At midnight. A bright glow enveloped Yoshi, causing Ian to wake up with a start. He sat up in bed, rubbing his eyes, and glanced over at Yoshi's room. The glow was still there, even brighter than before. Curious, he got out of bed and crept across the hall to investigate. Yoshi? You okay in there? There was no reply, but the glow didn't fade. Ian hesitantly pushed open the door and stepped inside. The room was bathed 
in otherworldly light, casting strange shadows on the walls. Yoshi lay motionless on the bed, but his chest rose and fell slowly with each breath. As Ian watched, he noticed something else, a faint, iridescent glow emanating from Yoshi's body. Yoshi? You're... you're glowing. There was no response, but the glow continued to pulse gently. Ian stepped closer, his curiosity overwhelming his fear. As he examined Yoshi more closely, he could see that the glow was coming from inside his skin, as if his very cells were alight. It was beautiful and terrifying at the same time. I... I don't understand. What's happening to you, Yoshi? Suddenly, Yoshi's eyes snapped open, fixing on Ian with an unnatural glow. His breathing became labored and his muscles tensed. The glow intensified, casting a blinding light around the room. Yoshi! What's happening to you? With a great burst of energy, Yoshi sat up in bed, the covers falling away from his glowing body. His eyes were filled with an unearthly light, and his words came out in his native Japanese language. The room shook with the force of his voice, and the glow seemed to consume everything around him. Reborn? What do you mean? Mario saved your life! Yeah. Just then, Shelly burst into the room, her eyes wide with fear and confusion. Dad, are you okay? What's going on? Shelly, I still must. Nani kotomo anata o kizutsuke tari wa shimasen. What did he say? He said he loves you, Shelly. He's promising to protect you. But what about murder mystery? Watashi tachi ya matoni motorimas. Yakusoku shimas. Tada. Kega o kanza ni kaifuku sa sete kudasai. As the otherworldly glow began to fade, Yoshi's body returned to its normal color. He looked exhausted but relieved. The events of the past few days had taken their toll on him, but he knew that he had been given a second chance. He lay back on the bed, letting out a shuddering breath. Yoshi? What just happened? You were acting so strange. You were glowing. You were speaking in Japanese. It was all so... otherworldly. Yeah, Dad. What's going on? I... I'm not sure. It's hard to explain. I feel... different. Like I've been given a new purpose. But I need to rest now. I'm very tired. The next morning, Yoshi woke up feeling remarkably refreshed. The glow had completely faded as he felt as if he had shed some invisible burden. He got out of bed and went to his daughter's room. He knocked on her door and waited for a response. Come in. Shelly, I'm sorry for fighting you last night. I didn't mean to worry you. But I feel so much better now. Once everyone knows up, we can continue.